Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video I thought I would reflect on how things went for my first 100 mile race which was the South Downs Way 100 which happened now a couple of weeks ago. Uh, overall I was really pleased with it, the experience was amazing though of course pretty tough in places uh, but I wanted just to share here some reflections, some thoughts and some key lessons that I'll take from the day. So hopefully this will be useful if anyone out there is thinking of running their first 100 mile race or if they are planning on racing the South Downs Way 100 specifically. I thought I'd just pop up firstly a few training stats and so I can kind of reflect briefly on, on how my training block for this race went. So I'll pop those up on the screen here. Um, things to pick out, I suppose biggest week was 80 miles, 8,200 feet of elevation. And I know people who are training for 100 miles sometimes go further than that. They sometimes try and do a 100 mile week. But yeah, that was my biggest one. Average weekly mileage was 51 miles. Uh, so slightly under what I was hoping for. That includes taper weeks, cutback weeks. Uh, but I did have a period of illness in, in the training block. Uh, and also some times when I needed to take some um, periods to recover a little bit more. The, the other interesting thing, the other interesting stat um, was about weight gain. So actually over my training block, I gained four kilograms. So I ended up at 78 kilograms, uh, about 12 stone. And that was something I wasn't expecting, but my legs did still start to feel a bit more heavy after doing strength and conditioning. I was sometimes eating a lot more, so sometimes an extra thousand calories a day um, because my body just feed, feed, you know, felt like it really needed it and needed the fuel. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. You know, sometimes people assume, oh, if you're doing lots of training, you're probably going to shed some weight. But no, for me, it was it was weight gain for my training block. So moving on to the day itself and and lessons that I'll I'll take from it. The first thing that I wanted to mention was just about uh, the importance of adjusting. Um, so one of the things that we had to contend with on the weekend of the race was pretty severe heat. Um, and when I say severe, in terms of you know UK standards, so we had like 30 degrees centigrade um, and the South Downs Way is pretty exposed for a lot of it. You're not running through forests, you haven't got too much coverage. Um, so yeah, that was a real thing to contend with. But I was happy with how I adjusted on the day. I found myself running mainly based on heart rate for the first half of the race. Uh, and actually part of that was just due to the fact that my watch wasn't displaying in the way that I thought it was. So I was using my Coros Apex Pro and I, I initially you know, pressed start, ran over the, the start line and I, I assumed that my heart rate would be displaying on the screen that also shows your distance and your time, uh, but it wasn't. So I actually just flipped over to the heart rate screen and all I had displayed for the vast majority of the first half, half was heart rate and time, uh, which meant I was focusing much less on distance, but I was trying to keep my heart rate in the low 140s. And of course with the heat, it was pushing up a little bit more. And I think that meant that I adjusted to the heat and I paced it much better than I might have otherwise um, done. So yeah, that was the first thing. Um, in terms of my my goal, I was trying to to go for the sub twenty four. Um, so if you if you run the race in sub twenty four hours um, for the South Downs Way hundred, then you get a hundred miles one day buckle. So that's what I was aiming for. Um, the cutoff for the race overall is thirty hours, but I was going for sub twenty four, and I'd expected or hoped at least to get out of the Washington Aid Station at fifty four miles at about eleven hours because the heat started to take its toll on me so around 40 to 50 miles instead i was running a bit slower than i expected uh, and adjusting based on the heat and i got out of washington aid station about 11 hours 32. so i think that was a really important decision because it meant in the second half of the race i had a bit more energy than i would have done and it meant that I didn't blow up. I, I was suffering at parts for 40 to 50 miles, but it meant that I, I wasn't going too much faster. So yeah, I'd say adjust if you need to, do respect the distance as well, because the, the longest I'd run was 50 miles. Um, so I did the South Downs Way 50 and a couple of other 50 miles preceding that. Uh, but the South Downs Way 50 I did in about eight hours, 14 minutes. And, and the danger there could have been to try and double that and maybe add a couple of hours. Um, but it's 100 miles, it's, it's a long time that you're out there. Um, and, and in the end, I added, added um, about six hours on to, um, so I doubled and added about six hours on to my 50 mile time. Um, so it's important to respect the distance, I think particularly for my first 100, not going off too fast. And I, I feel like I did that, so that was the first thing. So the second thing that I realized the importance of when running 100 miles was to take good care of your feet. 
Really, really crucial. So at the start of the race, I taped up my feet. So the Hapla band uh, was the tape I used. Looks a little bit like this. And I put some extra in little bags so I could have that at aid stations in case I needed to retape my feet, but luckily I didn't need to. So I did that at the start. I also used these little pots and put some extra anti-chafe in there. So if I got to an aid station and my feet were starting to rub, then I could use that. And it's nice and light, these little tubs. So you know, not any, uh, not much extra weight that you're carrying with you. So yeah, that went very well. I had this big dilemma before the race as to whether or not I should change my shoes at 50 miles, so at halfway. I didn't in the end, I stuck with them. And I was running in this, so the North Face Vective Endurus 2. This shoe has been great for me this year. It's been really good. I did my 50 mile earlier this year, the South Downs with 50 in those, but no problems. It's quite an understated sh shoe. You kind of forget that you're wearing it as you go along. Um, but by the end of the race, I had no blisters whatsoever. The only thing that I did have was a, a slight uh, swelling across the top of my foot where your laces sit. Um, but I think that was just because of how hot my feet were by the end of the race. Um, I had a bit of a dilemma because my Achilles felt like it needed support um, towards the end of the race in the last, say, 20 miles. But at the same time, I wasn't wanting to tie my laces too tight because it was putting pressure on that swelling I had on the top of my foot. Um, so I kind of went for a half halfway in between a, a bit of pressure from the laces so I could support my Achilles, but not so much that it was pushing extra on that swelling at the top. Um, but overall, you know, really can't complain. 100 miles in those shoes, no blisters whatsoever. Um, so I was very pleased with, with how that worked out. And following on from that point about the feet, I would say that a lot of ultra running is about good admin, just taking good care of your body and thinking about what it needs, reacting to things quickly. You know, if you need the loo, then go to the loo. Uh, if you're feeling some chafing coming on, then deal with it quickly. Um, if your nutrition's not working out, then adjust. Um, and that's one of the things that I really like about ultra running. It, it's less of a pure form of running in comparison to like a road 5K or a 10K. You're having to deal with problems as they arise. So it becomes very strategical as a result. So the other thing that I was reminded of with running the South Downs Way 100 was just that you have to have faith that things can improve. My low point was really around the 40 to 50 mile mark coinciding with the heat of the day. And I did find myself thinking at particularly the, the 45 mile point, I think it was at that aid station. Um, you know, I feel pretty rough now uh, and I've got 55 miles left to go. So how will, how will I cope with this? How will I deal with it? Um, but there is this ebb and flow um, when it comes to running longer distance. And the thing that surprised me was that I actually felt much better at mile 80 than I did at mile 45. Um, but you have to bear that in mind. You have to think to yourself, look, I might be feeling a bit rough now, but things can get better, they can improve. So that's one of the key lessons that I would certainly take away from the day. If you've seen my South Downs Way 100 race video, then you might notice there that the support I had on the day was epic. It was really, really good. My crew and pacers were really on it in terms of making sure I was keeping cool, giving me ice to have on the back of my neck, uh, dipping my hat in water. Um, ensuring that I had nutrition, I was keeping motivated. So that can really, really make the difference. Um, it's about building layers of confidence and crew and paces can be one of those crucial layers. Um, aside from that, I knew the course quite well. So I'd run the last 65 miles of it. It was only the first 35 I hadn't. And a couple of people in my crew and pacer team had also run the race and completed it before. So uh, Jeff had run it twice, Telmo had run it, run it once. Uh, and that was really useful to have in my team people who knew what I was going through in terms of the, the dips, the downs, um, but also just to, to understand what I might need in terms of um, further support as well. The other thing that I did in the lead up to the race was I made a short video about 10 minutes for my crew and pacers to give some messages in terms of what I was aiming for on the day, my goals, but also some things that I would find useful in terms of how they might be able to support me. So if anyone wants to see that video, if you find it useful to see uh, what I was saying there to my crew and pacers, uh, then do just let me know. I can share it. It's an unlisted video on YouTube at the moment, but I'm happy to share the link in case anyone would find that useful. So just a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Firstly, poles. I found those really, really useful. I use them for the last 30 miles of the race. And yeah, they just help save the legs, particularly on the hills. So yeah, I would definitely use those again in future. Something that didn't go so well. So nutrition. And it was difficult because I was trying to take on as much nutrition as possible. So my strategy was typically to eat something every half an hour, eat something small, 
to take on liquid every 10 minutes. Um, but I did get to a stage about eight or nine miles in where my stomach wasn't having it. It was cramping up a bit. I was feeling sick. And so at that point, I just went back to drinking water, keeping little bits of tailwind going, uh, having watermelon. So things that are quite neutral. And it, and it did start to feel better after that. But yeah, it was a good few miles, a uh, good few hours rather in the race where my, my stomach wasn't really having it. I don't know how much that was the heat uh, or if I need to kind of readjust my, my strategy for nutrition. Um, I was eating quite a few Velo Forte blocks. So that was one thing I was having. Uh, some caffeine ones in the later stages of the race. Uh, and actually from about 54 miles, I was, I was getting in some caffeine. So with some Coke as well. Uh, I was having some flapjacks, so like mountain fuel ones, some potatoes, some sandwiches. Uh, but actually in the end, although I made like five sandwiches, I only ate one in the end um, because, yeah, my stomach just wasn't wasn't really feeling it. Um, so, yeah, that's something I think I need to look into and, and, and adjust and, and maybe think about, um, you know, what kind of nutrition would I want to go for in future? So the big question, uh, the thing that people often ask you once you've finished your first hundred, would you do it again? And my answer would be yes, I think I would do another one, but it would have to be a race that inspires me or a route that I really like. I wouldn't just sign up for any because it's a big undertaking. It's a long way. And also the training takes a lot of time. Uh, if I did another one, I would want to train for it properly. And for me, that would mean, you know, training for between maybe 11 and 14 hours a week. So at the moment, I'm looking forward to, you know, reigniting some of the interests that have kind of fallen by the wayside because of 100 mile of training, uh, doing a bit more reading, a bit more writing um, and also maybe mixing up, doing a bit more swimming, uh, doing some more music. Um, but, yeah, I definitely would sign up for another one. Uh, it's just, yeah, finding the right race um, and, and not doing it immediately. So I haven't signed up for a for any more you know, off the back of the South Downs Way 100, but you know, next year at some point, probably another one. Uh, and actually my next race is the opposite to the South Downs Way 100. Firstly, it's a kilometer and uh, secondly, it's swimming. So I'm gonna be doing the Brighton peer-to-peer -peer race um, here that we've got on the, on the South Coast. So that, that's my next one, that's in a couple of weeks time. Beyond that, I've got one other running race booked in, which is the Bait Screen Gallop in September. Um, and that's basically a three and a half mile loop. And you do as many as you want or can in six hours. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. You only have to do one lap in order to get a medal, in order to get a finish. Um, but yeah, those are the two things I've got booked in coming up. I will book in some autumn and winter races. Um, so some ultra distance, maybe a 50K. Um, but yeah, not 100 miles um, too soon, but maybe next year I'll start having a look and, and seeing what uh, 100 mile routes inspire me and what ones I wanna, wanna put myself in for. So those were just some thoughts, some reflections on the South Downs Way 100. Do let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions, anything I haven't covered there. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who showed support in the lead up to the race in my training on race day. I could definitely sense as I was you know, running along over that weekend that there was people who were willing me to the finish and that makes such a difference. You know, those who were sending messages, dot watching, um, those who were there on the day. So yeah, massive thank you to everyone who supported in, in any way. So have a good week, everyone. Enjoy your running and I'll see you all in the next one.